Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco with additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Here with SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from OpenStack 2015 in beautiful Vancouver, right here on the harbor. Uh, going into this segment, talking about some of the networking pieces uh, with our sponsor, Brocade. I've got Dave Meyer. Welcome back to theCUBE, Dave. Chief Scientist from, from Brocade. Thanks, Stu. It's great to be here, man. Great, and, and Tom Nadeau, it's your first time on the program. Thanks for joining us. Distinguished engineer with Brocade. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right, so gentlemen, last year, one of my disappointments in Atlanta was just when I got all the feedback from the community and dug into it, is Neutron was a, not nearly as stable as most people would like, and a lot of things going on. A lot has changed in the last year, so b before we dig into that, maybe you know, introduce to our audience kind of you know, what your role is at Brocade and what you're working on. Dave, Dave we'll start with you. Okay, um, so what I'm working on right now is, um, well, I had been chair of the Open Daylight Technical Steering Committee last year when I was on theCUBE. We, we spent time talking about that. Right now, I'm the board, I'm the chair of the board. Um, uh, our colleague Colin Dixon is chair of the TSC. Um, kind of maybe unusually, right now, I'm working mostly on something called machine learning and applying that to networking, which actually fits well with all of this but it's sort of a, diff a little bit of a different area. All right, so Dave, yeah, we did an event with the uh, MIT Sloan School looking at the second machine age and the whole digital economy. Uh, let's not talk about OpenStack, let's talk about that. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, uh, Tom. Uh, no, you know, I'm let, ready let, for that. Let, 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 Tom, let's, let's talk about uh, you know, what, what, what your role is at Brocade and what brings you to the OpenStack show. Yeah, I, uh, my role at Brocade is, uh, I've got a couple of roles. I'm sort of half in the CTO group a little with Dave uh, and those guys, uh, but my primary role is, is to run the development uh, teams for OpenStack and Open Daylight uh, and OPNFV, although they're all kind of related. All right, so if the premise coming into this segment was last year, you know, Neutron needed a bunch of work. I know much has gone on. You know, you guys are helping, the community is helping, lots of people involved. What's the state of networking in OpenStack? You want to take a, take a uh, first shot at that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think things have, things have evolved a bit. Um, but I think you still, there's still work that needs to be done. I mean, we've done a lot of work in ODL where we've gone in and sort of, um, uh, you know, brought things up to snuff a bit. Um, you know, the project got got sort of left uh, alone a little bit when one of the vendors kind of uh, departed mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, so we've come back and reboot, rebooted that project a lot. Uh, spent a lot of effort on that, but it's, it's uh, it's kind of an iterative thing. So we've spent time sort of getting things back, getting people together, getting people working on it regularly. Uh, there's, there's two guys on my team that are working on this regularly now. And uh, it's guys from Red Hat, guys from Intel, um, and, and a couple of other folks, I think, coming in. So I think that's good, but I think there's more work that needs to be done between you know this sort of Neutron ML2 sort of interface to ODL versus what's going on on the southbound side uh, getting all that sorted out, um, plus the uh, group-based group -based policy or policy situation. How does that go in here? There's, uh, you know, so it's it's going to take time. Yeah. So, can I say one thing about yeah, that? Please, it's just yeah. kind of a meta angle on this too right now is that one of the problems we had in open daylight is that, um, and, and one of the reasons why the, there was sort of a divergence between open daylight and, <coughs> and, and basically neutron, and, and this is the thing you've been talking about that's been kind of, it's getting better, is that from a perspective of the open daylight community, we weren't really participating with the Neutron community, right? Yeah. And so that has changed. And then the Neutron PTL, this guy named Kyle Mister, is a really great guy, has really been fairly active in open daylight, or at least helping the open daylight Neutron crew, um, uh, you know, kind of. Um, oh, Kyle's on the yeah on the team now. Yeah, yeah. On the so the so you project, know, you get, there's, yeah. there's the there's this good integration going on which we didn't have last year. 
Yeah, no, great. I mean, yeah, for, for th those that aren't familiar, you know, originally it was really the Nasira guys that contributed a lot of the Neutron code. Uh, talked with VMware, we're going to have, you know, some VMware people, you know, definitely on the queue plenty of times. Um, and, the, you know, they are kind of put a renewed effort over the last year into various pieces of OpenStack, but from Neutron standpoint, it's a whole lot of those people. I, I know Kyle from his uh, Cisco days, he's now over at HP with the Helion group. Uh, yep. What is that relationship now between ODL uh, and, and, you know, uh, what's going on in Neutron, how much you know, sharing of code is there, and how much of it just kind of relationships between those two open source bodies? Uh, I'll, take a I'll, I'll take a whack at that. Yeah, okay. So like, my perspective on this is that um, there, there are at least two <coughs> camps. You know, there are the people who think, um, well, Neutron should be able to do all of networking, and we were just having an a, a, a in-depth in discussion about this last night over dinner. And then there are people who think, um, well, there should be um, uh, some uh, some piece of software or some agent mediating between Neutron and the network. And what it came down to in our discussions last night and, <coughs> and previously is that um, there's sort of overlay and underlay management that's going on. And and what Neutron is good at is overlay management, right? And so the ideal role for um, something like Open Daylight is sitting between the two. So it has visibility into the overlay and the underlay. And it, and it has a kind of a unique position there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that was uh, the, the conversation we were having. The uh, Somebody asked, they said, so what, what role does ODL play in an all OpenStack, uh, say, VXLAN deployment? I said, it, it has lots of role to play. I mean, it's got to manage the underlay. Um, so, so in in you know a lot of ways, it 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 handles the traditional NMS EMS functionality that you used to have with a you know bespoke kind of application. Um, but then, like Dave was just saying, it's it also sort of joins the two together, um, and and uh, lets you bind them together if you want. You don't have to either, by the way. Yeah, I, I mean, if I if I look at it, you know, ODL has always been you know pretty good at kind of the southbound that interface yeah. down with the hardware. <laughs> Uh, you know, we were really saying, you know, what, what's the controller going to be? And, you know, okay, how does that work with a variety of platforms? So that's something I think if we can take that learning from ODL and bring that over to OpenStack, that, yeah, that, that's so, goodness. Yeah, very much so. And there, <coughs> uh, you know, just, just to not leave you with the impression that everything is perfect there, um, there's, <laughs> sort of <laughs> there's a bit of a um, philosophical divide with respect to this because there are, I don't know if you want to call them purists, or people on one end of the overlay spectrum believe that the overlay should know nothing about the underlay and that the value of the overlay is in just that decoupling, right? There are other people who go, well, you need to understand what the overlay is, otherwise you can't debug it, you can't optimize it, and all of this stuff. And so there's controversy there yet. That, that hasn't shaken out completely. So ODL is sitting um, in the we do both camp, and there's controversy around that. So it's not, I mean, there's evolution that we're going to see over the next year in all of this. I mean, the way the way I was describing it the other day was this: this kind of this continuum, right? There's sort of all the way over here is the sort of the, you know, applications. You don't need to know anything about the underlay. The underlay you plug it in, they're just stupid Ethernet switches, right? And then there's all the way on the other side, which is you need to tightly bind the two together so that one can control the other and all that. Um, Wait a minute, that's not ATM or anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and so there's this continuum, right? And I think the cool part about the ODL OpenStack integration story is you can actually slide that around depending on how you want to do it. You don't, it's not prescriptive in one or the other or whatever. I mean, you can slide this around and meet your needs. And we have, we have customers that are deploying ODL with and without OpenStack. And it's, it's a different, you know, uh, sort of facet on that, on that, you know, spectrum. All right, so <laughs> if, if I could step back for a second here, from, from the networking space in general, <coughs> one of the big conversations we've been having is that whole kind of software-defined networking. Uh, how do we you know, simplify networking? How do we make it much more extensible? Uh, the open networking user group, uh, the, the, the user community actually said, you know, I'd love to have a software ecosystem uh, that I can do you know, more like what I do with the rest of you know, kind of my purchases. Um, yeah. how, do you, is there an intersection between kind of what's going on in SDN and here at OpenStack? And if so, how, how do those mesh? Want to go? You want to? Yeah. There, so I, I, I definitely think there is one. I mean, we we are actively building one. You know, for our applications that we're building on the controller, we're we're very much treating the controller like an operating system. Uh, very much. You know, 
there's, there's kind of infrastructure, fundamental components that go in there, and we're not going to reinvent them in every application that we build or um, you know, other sort of pseudo infrastructure components. Um, and you know, and and the cool thing is, you know, you can you can mix and match these applications as you need uh, to to build them. You can you can choose to build your own. You can go buy them. You know, um, so I think there is the same opportunity, um, you know, happening that that happens in OpenStack, in yeah. in the you know in the SDN controller space. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, the only thing I'll add to that is that uh, I'm a little bit, I, I guess it's ambivalent is the right term about the you know, prospects for the ecosystem looking sort of like the iPhone ecosystem with the app store it's and all that. It's not an app store, yeah. You know, it's it, that, that to me, as I say, I'm ambivalent about that because the network space, um, for at least for infrastructure components, isn't like the app space that you're, for your iPhone, right? So maybe there'll be applications, but uh, there will be applications, but it may look more like um, you, you, a Red Hat sort of model or something like that where basically you bundle um, value-added applications with whatever the infrastructural components are. Well, it's a little different for one important reason. Um, you know, in the App Store, there's sort of small, generally speaking, they're kind of small apps. They're not tested to interact with each other a lot. Uh, they're sort of interacting with the base system. There's maybe some security checks and all that, and the light testing. Um, the applications, I mean, you got to remember the, the controller and OpenStack are infrastructure for, you know, network and services deployment. Um, and so there's a, there's a significant testing component that needs to go to pre-qualify that, like the Red Hat model that you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Where, you know, if you're a, an officially qualified Red Hat app, or even Canonical, those guys have a whole testing infrastructure you got to plug into first, get qualified, and then you can be offered. So it's a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the point, I, I guess, if I look back at the keynote this morning, Jonathan talked about, you know, if we have interoperability and potentially even federation <coughs> uh, between certain environments in an OpenStack environment, um, I can buy software and not know, I need to worry about kind of the underneath, is the software I buy going to work on this component? Actually brings me to my next question is, you know, we haven't talked about containers yet. Yep. Um, one of the real hot topics we've really had in the industry the last year or so, um, and now there's Magnum and you know, a couple other projects here in OpenStack. Uh, you know, one of the big gaps in, in, in the whole container space has been networking. Of course, Docker bought uh, Socket Plane. Uh, you know, give us your thoughts. What, how does, you know, just containers, OpenStack, you know, and networking in general, you know, what, 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 what's your position on, on that space? You know? Um, All right, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, well, let me give you my two right. cents and right. then Dave can give you his. I, I, um, I mean, it's, the, the space is ripe with potential, right? I mean, you can containerize anything from the controller to the OpenStack components, um, and for a lot of good reasons. Um, but the, the power in the containerization, in a lot of ways, is this sort of, is, is for applications, right, in that, their packaging is sort of uh, irrelevant to what they run on. That's the one of the big advantages of container, right? Where you can you can package up the app and it'll run whatever, right? And and that gets back to the previous question, right? Where you're testing and qualifying these things. So I think I I, I almost don't in that space. I almost don't think containers um, change the equation, right? You still have to test and qualify those things. It's just a different delivery mechanism. Um, which is p potentially faster, cheaper, um, but still, you know, containers also have their own security issues, right? So you can't just flick these things around willy-nilly, right? You're going to have to still do the, the mm -hmm. hard work. Yeah, unfortunately, we still haven't found that silver bullet for any of the IT problems, right? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> well, lucky thing for us, right? Lucky thing, right. <laughs> uh, I'll just say one other thing is, is that, you know, the, you mentioned the socket plane guys. Well, you know, Brent and Madhu and Dave Tucker and those guys, um, they did see... The, I mean, you know, the the kind of the kind of brilliant thing they did was see that this technology was coming up and that it, it it was its networking capabilities were you know in question, right? And a lot of the work they've done, I think, has improved that. But like Tom said, um, if you kind of think about it this way, how long have we had? I, I mean, how long have we had hypervisors around so that yeah. we could have VMs? It's been a while. So it took a while to get to where we're at, and and even there, there there are issues that you could raise. So. The technology is fairly new. I think. I think what uh, one of the things that really attracts people about it is that 
it, it's it's just much lighter weight, you know, and, and yeah, operationally it's easier to deploy you know, and kind yeah. of manage, but well, every aspect of it basically, yeah. right? So, but we have to save we have to solve many of the same problems. Yep. All right. So, so Dave, you know, what what are you hoping to get out of the show this week? What, what's Brocade working on, and uh, you know, what, what's exciting you in this space? Yeah. So, um, great question. So, as a I don't know if we're talking about this on or off, but um, I've been working on sort of upstack <coughs> things these days, machine learning in particular. And what's really interesting, I'm going to say this here, maybe I don't want to do this, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's really interesting is that this technology is really, really powerful and the network space where we work, where we spent all our life working or the last <coughs> couple of decades anyway, uh, hasn't been touched by this. So if you think about what is orchestration, what is, what, what, even what is control and management, um, you see that there's all of this opportunity um, to work in the, in, to put these two spaces together. So one of the things that I, I, I've been doing since I've been here the last 24 hours or whatever is I've been talking to people about what their use cases are and what their pain points are around OpenStack. And what I find is, um, you know, the, if you think about an automation continuum of which OpenStack's a big part, um, there's a really nice opportunity to do some interesting work here on top of OpenStack or on top of ODL. Yeah, so exactly. that's kind of what I've been doing. Yeah, I was going to say ML actually has some interesting potential. Like we were just talking about containers, right? And the sort of the logic or intelligence behind deploying the containers, how, when, um, and not just how and when, but adapting as you go, like detecting security anomalies as you go, detecting Learning. those patterns, right? Um, those are things that don't exist in these systems today. I mean, if you look at the way I look at the OpenStack ODL. OPNFV, all these things that we're building, these are still very uh, primordial in the sense that they still, yeah, they're automation, and that's one of the cool things that SDN has brought to the party is the automated programmability, but you can make that faster, and you can also make that uh, better, you know, with ML. If, you know, if we can figure out how to wrap that sort of, you know, we keep using the word intelligence, but you know what I mean, around that. You so know. Tom and I have been working on some applications that use um, the massive amount of flow data that's around. I mean, there's just so much flow data everywhere, um, and we have some kind of interesting applications. They'll, you'll, you'll see these after a couple months or so, when right. we're done. Well, cool you know, we definitely look forward to catching up on, on, on some of that, the machine learning stuff, uh, you know, going forward. Love when we can take the, you know, infrastructure and, and, and help move it up stack uh, to, to really drive some new business value there. Um, we're going to have lots more uh, digging into the networking <coughs> space this week. Uh, so, uh, you know, Tom and Dave, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be right back with lots more wall-to-wall -wall coverage here from uh, beautiful Vancouver at the OpenStack Summit 2015 after this quick break. Cool.